paradise, where the warm blue oceans roll in towards the beaches in the world. Australia, the great modern cities, where the heart. Australia of the farms and sheep stations, a country of plenty, rich in fruit, and wool, and beef, and butter. But Australia, so rich in sunshine, is the driest of all continents. Man clings to the coasts. The center cannot see. The center, like the floor of a great ocean that was thus boiled dry, empty, immense, mocking. The never never, beckoning on to nowhere. And yet this is Australia too. The snowy mountains in the southeast. An incongruity. An Australian paradox. White in a red country. Cold in a hot country. Wet in a dry country. September, Australia's spring. The hills let go and the waters rushed to waste in the Pacific, less than a hundred miles away. A binge of meltwater. A thousand streams and four rivers on a gay, squandering spree. And Australia pays. In summer now, streams still running, water still slipping away through the green fingers of the lower slopes. This then is the setting of one of the most daring water control schemes in history, transcending in its scope the interests of New South Wales and Victoria, the states in which it stands. In its stature, it is a world project. 400 million pounds, 6,000 men, Nine major dams and many smaller ones. Rivers to be trapped and turned backwards, through the mountains, towards Australia's centre. A mighty project, aiming in a span of 25 years to translate an Australian dream into fact. <laughs>
speaking the same language because they share the same struggles and the same hopes. Maybe this is what gives so many nationalities a sense of unity and harmony. Except perhaps here, the sorter's nightmare is Anyway, from here the water goes 
straight through underneath the mountain for one and a half miles, then dropping, all told, a thousand feet onto the turbines inside the power station. As in fairy tales, the giant sleeps deep inside the mountain, awaiting the magic sun. Giant stirs. Water flows west toward deserts. Its power flows east toward cities.
Enormous snow has melted on these mountains. The Snowy River has run into the Pacific. But the ocean has water enough. It is the land which needs water, and the electric power which water generates. Water and power, without which Australians can never fully possess their own country. Water and power, which may one day turn the never-never into the sometime. Water and power, the springs, which tomorrow's giant will drink.